Here we'll look at some of the different types of solutions that can be made. For the first type of solution, we'll consider some solid orange drink crystals in a spoon. Here the drink crystals are the ingredient in the smaller amount, so they are called the solute. We'll also get a stirring rod we can use. Now we'll add some water to the beaker from a tap. The water is the ingredient present in the larger amount, so it is called the solvent in this case. We'll dump the crystals and stir them to help dissolve them. And after it's finished dissolving, we'll remove the stirring rod. Now what we have is a solution of orange drink in water. We see the mixture is uniform throughout, or homogeneous. So that means it's a true solution. Because we dissolved a solid in a liquid, we call this a solid in liquid solution. Now we'll look at some other types. Food coloring can be bought in grocery stores. Here's a dropper with some red food coloring in it. The food coloring is the ingredient which will be present in the lower amount in this case, so it's called the solute. This food color is a liquid, so our solute is a liquid this time. Now we'll add some tap water to our beaker. The water is the ingredient present in the larger amount here, so it's called the solvent. Now we'll add some food coloring to the water and wait for it to dissolve and spread throughout the water. The act of spreading out by itself throughout the water is called diffusing. After we leave it long enough, the coloring has diffused throughout the water. It is uniform throughout, or homogeneous. So we can say that this is a solution of food coloring in water. Remember the original food coloring in the dropper and the water in the beaker were both liquids. So this is our second type of solution. We call it a liquid in liquid solution because both the solute and the solvent started out as liquids. For our next type of solution, we'll start with a beaker of water. The water will be the ingredient that we have more of this time, so it is called the solvent in this case. Now we'll take a tank of compressed carbon dioxide gas, or CO2. The carbon dioxide will be the solute in this case. We attach a hose and a gas diffuser to the tank, a gas diffuser has tiny holes in it that allow small bubbles of gas to enter the liquid. The valve in the tank is opened and bubbles of carbon dioxide mix with the water and dissolve. After a fair amount of CO2 has dissolved in the water, we have a solution of CO2 or carbon dioxide in water, which we can call carbonated water. Carbonated water is the main ingredient in many soft drinks. To make a carbonated water solution, the gas carbon dioxide was added to the liquid water. So we call this type of solution a gas in liquid solution. The next type will be a solution that contains only gases. A solution of gases and gases is easy to find. We live in one. It's called air. Air is a solution which is made up of nitrogen gas, oxygen gas which we need to live, water vapor which comes from water that is evaporated, a gas called argon, carbon dioxide gas which plants need to grow, and small amounts of other gases. So we call air our fourth type of solution, a gas in gas solution. Can we have a solution of two solids? Here we have a chunk of solid copper and a chunk of solid zinc. It doesn't seem reasonable that we could mix two solids together and form a homogeneous mixture. What we can do is make these solids into liquids by melting them first. The melting point of copper is 1080 degrees Celsius, and the melting point of zinc is 419.5 degrees Celsius. Copper and zinc are melted in electric furnaces that get hotter than their melting points. Melted metals are said to be molten. We'll imagine we have two containers with molten metals. On the left, we have molten copper, and on the right, we have molten zinc. Now we'll watch as these two molten metals are poured into one container. What we have in the container at the bottom is a homogeneous mixture, or a solution of molten copper and molten zinc. A solution of copper and zinc is called brass. At the very high temperatures needed to keep copper and zinc molten, the brass is also molten, or liquid. If we lower the temperature, the brass will become a solid. 
A solution of two or more metals that have been melted down and mixed is called an alloy. So brass is an example of an alloy. It was made by mixing copper and zinc. Brass does not rust like steel, and it is quite strong. Therefore, it's used to make pipe fittings, which are used in plumbing. Brass is also an ideal metal to make musical instruments out of. Brass is used to make many different things. We started with solid copper and solid zinc, melted them, mixed them to make brass, and let the brass cool and solidify. So brass and other alloys are examples of solid in solid solutions. We'll quickly review the types of solutions we showed you. First, we looked at a solution of solid in a liquid. The example we used was drink crystals in water. Next, we looked at a liquid in liquid solution. And the example we used was liquid food coloring dissolved in water. Then we looked at a solution of a gas in a liquid. And the example we used was carbon dioxide gas dissolved in water to form carbonated water. The fourth type of solution we looked at was a solution made up of just gases. And the example we used was air, which is nitrogen, oxygen, and other gases all mixed evenly. The last type of solution we considered was a solid in solid solution. Alloys are examples of solid in solid solutions, and we showed you how the alloy brass is produced. Much of the matter we have around us is in the form of homogeneous mixtures or solutions. These are the main types of solutions, and for each type, there are many different examples.